Uh, here we are again, and this is rounding out, setting up the Squarespace site. So you've gone through and you've done the initial setup, you've done the layout of the pages, but now it's time to up the design ante. Yeah, so at this stage in the process, this is really where the sort of design freedom comes in and where my creativity really comes in. So anybody can kind of swap in their colors, swap in the fonts on their Squarespace site, which is, by Not the way- Not anybody. I mean, if people were colorblind, they couldn't do it. That's, well, they could, but just- They, they wouldn't, wouldn't know what it, it would look like. like yeah. Marriage. Which is the whole point of what makes Squarespace amazing is that anybody can make it look really good. However, I really think that this next step in the process is where I like to make it look custom and unique and really branded. And so that's going to be adding design embellishments and little, you know, design treatments to the photos and things like that. So you're going to see all the ways in which I do that and all the ways in which I complete this Squarespace design in this video. I think what's really fun is just seeing the custom elements from the original branding video that you were just thinking about like, oh, I could play with this or I could do this. And then it actually gets used in like a background or on a different part or a piece of the site uh, and it just makes it feel so much more custom and so much more interesting so hope everybody enjoys watching you put this together and the final squarespace site really rounding out this is my favorite part of the process so in this final stage of the website design i basically focus on three types of customizations number one section background banners number two graphic image treatments and number three using branded elements for visual details and content separators in this video, I'll show you each of these customizations in action as I go through the site and finalize the custom website design. Let's start with customizing my background banners. As I go through this design process, I like to think of my brand's graphic elements as building blocks that I can combine and remix in different ways to make my website visually interesting. So if you recall from the brand elements video, the building blocks I know I have to work with are my painted shapes. These came as a bonus with my custom font called Ryland and my hand-drawn elements that I included in the logo. So I start by updating the background banner for the intro section here on my homepage. I like the simplicity of just the plain parchment colored background, but given that two of our brand tone words are creative and quirky, I wanted the introduction to the website, the first impression, to be a little bit more visually interesting and unique. So that's why I decided to go back to my building blocks and play around with my painted shapes, arranging them in different colors and adjusting the transparency so they overlap. I also decide to incorporate this leaf image to give it a sort of collaged feel and add that organic feeling from the tone words as well. I swiped this photo for free from Unsplash like most of my stock photos. And then in Photoshop, I just use my photo adjustment tools to more closely match the color of my forest green brand color. If you're designing background banners like this with multiple elements, keep in mind you may need to adjust the focal point of the image in Squarespace or adjust the content on the page so that it lines up correctly and all of your content is readable. So in this example, it's really important to me that the navigation links are still visible and they don't overlap with the darker tan shape in the background. What I love about this first background banner is that it's a great introduction to a lot of my brand graphic elements. So as you scroll down the page and you see the painted shapes again or the graphic um, elements pop up, you'll have already been introduced to them in that header. Moving on down the page, that first banner has a lot going on. So I want an alternative style of banner that kind of balances that busyness with something more refined and more structured. So I eventually decide on this simple thin vertical line with the text descriptor of the section. I like the way that it interacts with the parallax feature of the template and kind of draws your eye down the page. I'll show you just one more fun thing I did with these background banners. If you remember from the layouts video, my original idea for this two ways to help section was a kind of split two-toned background banner. I eventually decided against that idea because I thought it was just a little bit too distracting. But instead of going from the green section of my little more about straight into the plain parchment background, I wanted some type of cool transition, especially because this is where the two most important calls to action on the homepage live. So I actually separated out the section intro into its own section within my index and I tested out this little triangle design treatment. You can do this on a lot of the Squarespace parallax templates. If you create a background banner for a transition section and you make the top of the banner match the color of the previous section and the bottom of the banner match the color of the next section, then you can kind of create a cool visual effect that makes it feel less like a standard Squarespace website with all of these simple straight across bands of background color. 
I love how interesting and unique and dynamic this looks. And again, the most important thing is that it leads a website visitor down into the next section. This is also a treatment I can use in other index pages that have sections across my website, like maybe my course landing page or the work with us services page. Another thing I do want to note about this design customization stage of the process, I like to use my homepage as my kind of creative sandbox. It usually has the most content on it, so I like to take my time experimenting with all kinds of different ideas, rearranging them throughout the page until I feel like I've hit on the right visual balance of things. So here I am trying out a treatment for one of the background banners on my homepage. I use my homepage to experiment, and then once I'm happy with how everything looks, I usually take all my various design executions and then I apply them to the rest of my pages in somewhat similar ways so that the whole website feels cohesive and intentional. I just find that if I'm trying to skip around to different pages during this stage of the process, I get a bit overwhelmed and scatterbrained. So by focusing on just one page being my homepage, I can give myself one single context to play around in and then I can extend that to the rest of my site. Also keep in mind, I probably played around with dozens of different ideas for each of the customizations that I'm going to show you until I hit upon that final execution. I just keep testing and trying until I arrive at something that fits the bill. Okay, now on to the next category of customization, graphic treatments for photos. To give a more custom look to your image blocks, you can consider adding some design features to make your photos really pop. This could be borders or background shapes or even layering on different graphic elements. So for this intro section, I decide I want a white border around my feature image. And this does two things. Number one, it plays well with the collage feel of the background banner by giving the image a subtle nod to like a retro photograph and an album with the white border. And then number two, the addition of the white also adds a freshness and a modern kind of crisp quality that brightens up the color palette a little bit. It's a really simple touch, but it just adds a finished and refined look to a stock photo. And again, in the final handover of this website, I'll include editable design files so that the website owner can just swap in their photos if they wanted to update this image. As I move on to the about section, I decide I do want another image here because I can envision that being an appropriate place for like a headshot or a team photo of the business. So first I try out applying that same basic white image border style for that photo, but it just feels a little bit too stark against the green background. So instead, I decided to try out a second image style option for some variation. I opt for not quite a border, but a kind of offset background shape in my branded coral color. So this connects my image to the coral H3 headline text, and it now gives me a second style option for my photos that I can use in various places throughout the rest of my site. The final category of customization just comes from adding branded visual details and content separators. I've said it before, but anything that you can do to go above and beyond the default layout and design of a Squarespace template is going to make the whole site feel more custom and less like any other brand or business out there could have it. So this is why all of these extra branded details really matter. For example, instead of the default horizontal line content block, can you use your brand graphic elements to design some type of alternative as a divider to break up your content? That's exactly what I decided to do here by using one of my paint swashes in this about section rather than just the horizontal line content block. Ultimately, I decided to move it underneath the two ways to help text to keep the about section a little bit less crowded and keep the eye moving down the page, but you get the idea. One other example I'll show you is from the free training section on the homepage. You can combine your graphic details with other customizations like my photo border idea, for example, to give your images a layered effect. So for this free training image, I add some of my hand-drawn embellishments to kind of carry those through from the logo and from the intro section background banner. And then I also add my pink paint swash behind the photo to bring more looseness to an otherwise pretty rigid layout in that section. The result is an image that looks far more branded and interesting than just a regular image block. So that's it on the three different types of design customizations I focus on at this point in the design process. Now it's just a matter of going through each section on each page and applying these different design treatments in similar ways to make everything look visually interesting but still cohesive. One thing I also want to mention is just to remain open to any changes in layout you might need to make as things develop. So for example, rather than having the Instagram and newsletter block in this section on the homepage before the footer, I decide to move it to the actual footer of the site so it will show up on every page of the website. This is a good option, especially for blog posts, because if a visitor lands on a blog post from, say, a search, 
the website owner will probably want those people to convert to their newsletter. All right, once I solidify the design, I go back through my Squarespace settings and I update every single little detail like my favicon, the share images, the settings of all the pages, etc. I'm going to save the final, final design of the site for the next video where you'll see the big reveal of all the pages and learn more about how we're selling this brand and website and how it can be customized to fit any business's needs. Here's just a little sneak peek at the final homepage and I will see you in the next video for the big reveal.